you, and I'm early. <laughs> I decided I'm not waiting till 12 noon. I want to talk to you now. I want to talk to you about taking charge of your life. And and I'm I'm constantly being asked by people, how did you get to to be known nationally and internationally? What is it that you did when you started out, when you had an interest in speaking? Uh, how, how did you go from being unknown and out of 3,000 speakers in the National Speakers Association, ultimately you, you became uh, the recipient of the National Speaker CPAE Award, that's, that's their highest award, and inducted into their Hall of Fame. And you received the Golden Gavel Award from Toastmasters International and was selected by Toastmasters, uh, top five speakers in the world in 1992. General Norman Schwarzkopf, one of the guys, that's some good company. Paul Harvey, that's good company. Leon Coca, that's good company, and Robert Shula. And and you, you were just a, a nobody from Liberty City in Overtown in Miami. And you were selected too. How'd you do that? <laughs> I'm gonna talk to you about how to do that. And 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 so I want you to think about any goal that you want to achieve, anything that you want to achieve. I want you to think about it right now. And part of what I want you to do, I, I want you to visualize the goal being accomplished. They ask Muhammad Ali, who said, I'm the greatest. How did, how did you get here? Howard, Howard Cosell, Cosell, who since passed, he was a news, he was a sports personality. And he said, he said, how did you get here, Muhammad? How, how, how did you know you could dominate boxing? He said, I got here when I was, I was running five o'clock in the morning, shadow boxing on a punching bag. I got here. I visualized myself speaking to the news conferences and celebrating my wins. And I got here long before I danced under the lights. <laughs> that he saw it. He saw it. I got here because I visualized myself being on major stages. I saw myself speaking in major venues. And I held that vision. And I took action. I've been recounting my steps. When my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer, and I just got elected for the third time to the Ohio legislature from the 29th House District, I resigned to go back to Miami to take care of my mother. I promised her she would never go to a nursing home. I want you to think about something that that drives you, something that compels you. Nietzsche said, if you know the why for living, you can endure almost anyhow. And so I resigned from the Ohio legislature. I was, I was the chairman of the Human Resource Committee, the Education Committee, I had a promising political career. I enjoyed politics, but I loved my mama. And I promised her, mama, when you need me, I'll be here. And so I resigned, went back to take care of mama, and I had to find something to do. And I had to find something that was me. Now, mind you, I don't have a college education, <laughs> okay? I never worked for a major corporation, and I wanted to speak and motivate and help people and speak for major corporations like Dr. Norman Vincent Peale and Zig Ziglar and, and Tom Peters and all the other people that I saw out there, uh, Tony Robbins. And, and, I'm, I'm, and I'm encouraging you to take action. I saw this guy named Ed Foreman from Executive Development. He's since retired. He came to Miami and he spoke. And he was offering a program for people who had an interest in motivational speaking, that he had this special class that, that he was going to be doing. And it, it was a boot camp. It was an intensive. And so after his presentation, I said, man, I should like to come. But I, I just... I can't afford to do it now. 
And he said something to me that I, I will always cherish. He said, if you can't afford to do it now, you can't afford not to do it. Whoa. He said, how are you going to teach people how to make things happen if you can't make things happen? Mm. That cut wide and deep. <laughs> I say, I'll see you in Dallas. <laughs> I didn't, have, I didn't have the money to get a play ticket, so I had my mama to fix me some food, so she fixed me a sweet potato pie. I found out how much it would cost to go to Dallas from Miami on Greyhound. She fixed me a, a, a pot of marinated frog legs. <laughs> if you never had frog legs, let me tell you something up in here. Really, they taste like chicken, all right? I was on that bus exchanging <laughs> exchanging frog legs and slices of sweet potato pie for pork chop sandwiches and collard greens and candy airs. Oh, we had a party. We were singing songs. We had a party on that bus going from Miami to, <laughs> to Dallas, Texas. By the time we got there, they called me frog man. I took action. I took action. There's some of you who want to do what I do, who want to speak. And let me share something that, that I've learned from Corona. If there's something you want to do, take action. Do it now. Had a friend that was sick, and I kept saying, I'm going to see him. And he passed. Mm. I didn't take action. Had the opportunity to do it, but I did not take action. See, this thing called life, we don't know what's going to happen from one moment to the next. And we know that. We've had the rug snatched out from under us. If there's something in your heart that you want to do, listen to me. Do it now. Miles Monroe, let me tell you, one of the most profound statements I enjoyed hearing him say, rob the cemetery of your gifts, of your dreams, of your talents of your art, of your book, of your leadership. Rob the cemetery. Don't take that stuff with you to the grave. God didn't choose you out of 400 million people to, to, to just come here, pay bills, die, and take that stuff with you. No. No. You are here for a purpose, to make the world a better place, to do the greater work. So you got to get an attitude. Because in order to, to live your dreams, you've got to be focused, clear what you want, and you got to take action. I was clear. This is what I'm going to do to take care of my mother. This is how I'm going to generate the money to do this. I knew working a job wouldn't do, do it, wouldn't get it. 95% of people who filed bankruptcy last year did so because of medical expenses. So I, I, I wanted to do something that was me, and I'm encouraging you to do you to do the same thing. Do something that's you, something that you enjoy, something that excites you when you think about it. When I get up in the morning, I say all things work together for good for those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. And Lord, whatever I face today, together you and I can handle it. And then I start smiling. I say, I'm going to motivate some people today up in here, up in here. I'm, I'm going to be calling out the hungry ones. <laughs> I'm coming for you. If you're hungry, I'm coming for you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why? I enjoy being around hungry people. They are, they are so creative. They're relentless. They just won't take no for an answer. There's a guy that's been pursuing me. He said, Mr. Butterball, I texted him back. This is Les Brown. He said, you are my Mr. Butterball. I want you to know I'm hungry. And every time you look around, I'm going to be there looking at you. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. <laughs> Take some action. Put voice in the comment section right now. Don't put it off. I could have waited and said, well, Oh, let, let me let me find some things that I can do to get the money so that I can fly. No, uh, George Washington Collins said, do what you can where you are and what you have and never be satisfied. And he was right. If I couldn't afford to do it, I couldn't afford not to do it. 
I couldn't afford not to invest in myself and tell people you need to invest in yourself. I could not afford to tell people, oh, you need to do something that's beyond your comfort zone and, and you will discover a part of yourself that you don't know right now if I wasn't will, willing to be a make it happen person. I'm going to teach people how to make it happen and I wasn't making it happen. And I did it. I made it happen. I I, <laughs> I I did a little fundraising. I had beard whiz parties. And <laughs> oh my goodness. I had card game parties. I, I mean, when I think about it, I sold some of my mama's sweet potato pie. <laughs> I was selling those, I mean. And I would tell people what I wanted to do. They say, here, last year. I have a friend named Madeline Haddock. And, and, and when I went back to Miami, She's the first person that contributed to my my efforts, to my dream of what I wanted to do, the impact that I wanted to make. Madeline Haddock, I talked to her the other day, and we're still friends after all these years. I, I called, I said, what, what made you do that? You didn't know me. She said, I just felt that you had something. And I decided to invest in you. See, when you make the commitment to do something, don't worry about it. Oh, I don't have the money. Don't worry. Somebody, if you're committed and you do what you're supposed to do, you do what you are called to do, somebody will invest in you. Mary McLeod Bethune was on Daytona Beach and singing with some kids, including her kids. She she was directing them. She was raising funds for for the college that she envisioned for African Americans during that time because we didn't have a college. And somebody heard her and said, tell me about this school you want to build. And, and she took him out to the Daytona city dump where the city fathers gave her this dump for $3 to build her college, Bethune-Cookman College. But it wasn't there yet. It was just in her mind. And this man walked out there in the middle of the night and both of them being stung by mosquitoes. And, and she said, over here will be the dormitory. And, and over here, this will be the, where the band will be. And over here, this, this will be the academic, the academic buildings. And when she finished, and this man became one of her donors, that man who saw her and shared her vision, and she spoke very well. That man was Mr. Singer of Singer Sewing Machines. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Millennials never heard of Singer Sewing Machines, but he was a very wealthy man. And so this is the, 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 what you have to do, is do what you can do with what you have, and always find ways in which you can improve on that because you don't know who's watching you. I made the commitment that I was going to do it, and I did it. Now, here, here's something else. This is key. This is key. Look at the people that you communicate with most, family members and friends. Look around at the people in your life, people who call you the most, people that you talk to the most. And if they don't inspire you, and they're in your inner circle, you have created a cage for yourself. What do you mean by that? You earn within two to $3,000 of your closest friends. You want to have an inner circle of people that when you look at them, you are inspired. When you look at them, you get fired up, okay? But if, if you... Uh, are surrounded by, by people that's on your level or below, you're restricting yourself. People rub off on you. Sidney Poitier, please come forward. I love his book, The Measure of a Man. He said, when you go for a walk with someone, something happens. Either you adjust to their pace or they adjust to your pace. Whose pace have you adjusted to? I can't say that enough. Whose pace? Have you adjusted to? You survived the coronavirus? And you're still here? 400,000 people gone? You are here. You've been chosen to do the greater work. 
And so get some help. If you knew how to do it, you would have done it by now. And get some help from somebody that's accomplished, somebody that's achievement driven, someone that inspires you. When I saw Mike Williams, he wrote the book, The Road to Your Best Stuff. The Road to Your Best Stuff. Get it. I wrote the forward for it. I was inspired by him. I wanted to have him around me. And, 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 and so I hired him as my news director when I was at WVKO radio station in Columbus, Ohio. So I can be around him. And he talked to me between records and, and changed my mindset of seeing myself entertaining people, LB, Triple P, Les Brown, your platter playing papa. There were none before me and there will be none after me. Therefore, that makes me the one and only young and single and love to mingle, certified, bona fide, dubably qualified to bring you satisfaction and a whole lot of action. Look out, baby, I'm your love man. I was hungry. <laughs> oh, I was bad, baby. They call me Les Brown, the man of our town. Hello. <laughs> He said, Browning, between records, you can do more than that. Brownie, that microphone you got, it can be used to just entertain people. There's nothing wrong with that. But you can educate people, too. I said, I can? Yeah. About things that's going on in the community. In fact, you have a responsibility to do that, man. People listen to you. Whoa, that relationship inspired me to go from just being a disc jockey to being a commentator, to becoming a community activist, to running for the Ohio legislature. See, you want relationships that inspire you. You, you, you become a part of our community. You will become inspired. You won't settle for being a, a, an average person. If, and if anybody didn't tell you, average is over. Did you get the memo? Hello, average is over. Hello, average is over. Yes. People <laughs> who don't know that average is over, they have skinny children. <laughs> You have greatness in you, and you want to be in an environment that, that inspires that greatness, that brings it out, that challenges you, that introduces you to a, a part of yourself that you don't know right now. You can't see the picture when you're in the frame. You're not listening to me by accident. This is a God moment. Everything I'm saying, you already know it. It's already in you. It's common sense, but not common practice. And, and what Corona has done is serve notice. Hey, you're going to leave here one day. Nobody's figured out how to get out of life alive. Live life while you can, manifesting your greatness in all the dimensions of your life. Yeah, I, that's how to go out. I'm 75. February 17th, I'll be 76. I want you all to give me some gifts. I love Mickey Mouse. Anybody know me? I'm a Mickey Mouse fan. I'll give you all an address so you can mail me some Mickey Mouse souvenirs, okay? Thank you. No, he didn't, honey. Yes, he did. <laughs> you can take them out the country, but you can't take the country out of them. How, 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 uh, how the ever? <laughs> I was just, I was just joking, but I'm serious. <laughs> Listen. This is the time for self-awareness. This is the time saying, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth thee. Talk to me. There's something I'm supposed to do. If you're struggling and going through a tough time right now, say, look, you didn't bring me through this period where we are just to be stuck. I need you to deliver some angels to help liberate me. I need some insight. I need a revelation. I need you to talk to me. I'm quiet. I'm getting still. Speak to me. See, uh, this, this is a time. But most people, most people are so caught up in the distractions. You, you want to be productive. Keep thine eyes single. You, you want to be actively engaged to doing something 
great with your life. That's, that's where we are. This space here, the fact that you're not a, a number of, of, of those people, and, and my heart goes out to them and their, their families, of that 400,000 that's out of here, you are still here to help some people. I've been dealing with fourth stage cancer for years. I'm helping people who are struggling with cancer to let them know it's not a death sentence. Doctors determine the diagnosis. God determines the prognosis. And so when they see me still actively engaged, I'm still here for people my age that's in their 70s they say, whoa, this guy is still active. This guy is still living and, and doing things and making a difference and, and, and building a legacy and living a life that will outlive him. Engage with his children and not calling them for car gas money. Or, okay, can you all let me hold a little something, something? He's still making an impact, living a life that will outlive him. And so they say, wait a minute, I want to do something too. I got some stuff in me. I've got some ideas in me. I've got some inventions in me. And you do. Bring them out. Bring them out. This, you, you have to, sometimes you have to grab yourself in the collar and say, come on, get serious. That the, Michael Jackson was right. You got to look at that man or that woman in the mirror and say, hey, get serious. You've been seriously not serious. You've been wasting valuable time. Get serious and take control of yourself. You don't have the luxury of being reckless or, or procrastinating or putting things off or being intimidated by fear or, or being depressed. Come, come on, snap out of it. You got work to do, the greater work. Yes, you do. That's why you're listening to me. The ones who don't have the greater work, they're watching Mike Tyson and different people he used to beat up all the time. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's stimulating. Or those who are waiting for a stimulus check. $600? Hmm. $2,600 if they had $2,000 to it? Is that stimulating? Is it stimulating and the money's already spent? Hmm. Wow. Don't take much of you, huh? <laughs> $2,600? My bills will say, <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? Do you you have any more jokes? You leave it. Did you sit us to cover your bills? To cover, you got 10 children, yes. Why? The Lord said, be fruitful and multiply. Okay. How many grandchildren you got? 15? You got 15 grandchildren? Yes, sir. Mm. And um, got any great-grandchildren? Yeah. How many you got? I got four great-grandsons. Hmm. George Bernard Shaw said we should establish a tribunal where people would have to come once a year to give some justification why they should be allowed to live for another year. Let me ask you this. Yes, sir. Why should you be allowed to live for another year? What, what's going to be different? Uh, do you have liabilities or are you building a legacy? What, what's going to be different? If you're allowed to live for another year. Hey, wake up, wake up, wake up. You 75. What's, what, 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 what's going to be different? You got all the, you got any bills? Yeah. If you die right now, will people have to do a GoFundMe to bury you? Yeah. Speak up. Yeah. Okay. Why should you be allowed to live another year? Oh, I love the Lord. Oh, <laughs> you love the Lord. Whoa, what a revelation. Mm. Yep, you didn't make the cut. 
See you. Wouldn't want to be you. <laughs> He's on today. He's on today. He's on fire. <laughs> you know, have you ever looked at some people and say, hmm, I wonder why they're still here. There's some good people gone. Good people gone out of here. And this one over here ain't doing nothing. I don't understand. <laughs> this thing's called, you know, we're not supposed to question God, but he said, in all thy getting, get, it, get some understanding. Well, Lord, I'm not questioning you, but I just want to get some understanding. Somebody shot one of these guys with nine bullets, and Dr. King got one. Dr. King was taken out. This other guy's still here. I don't understand. Just help me get some understanding. <laughs> oh, behave. Hello. This thing is this called <laughs> this thing called life. Ooh. If if you if you agree that life is interesting, it's a mystery. Just put yes in the comment section. Let me see. Let me see some yeses up in here. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm going deep on you today. I'm laughing, but I'm dropping some stuff. As these young folks say, I'm dropping some knowledge up in here. But put yes in the comment section. Yeah. And if you're ready to get unstuck, put voice in the comment section and teach you how to get unstuck, how to reach your goals how to use your voice, how to make money with your voice from home. More people are working from home than in buildings now, before the coronavirus. The corporations found a way because of technology that people can work from home and they don't have to pay for those large buildings and their maintenance and the air conditioning or the heat. It's economically more feasible for people to work from home. Hmm. Let's think about that. So this is this is the new economy that's being generated from home. You want to learn how to make money from home with your knowledge, with your skills, with your dream, with your voice, with your story. We have expanded my curriculum to teach you how to do all that and more. Put voice in the comment section. If you're ready to be around the right people, if you're ready to be in a community of collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationships, if you are mindful of robbing the cemetery of your gifts and of your dreams, if you knew how to do it, you would have done it by now. If you're ready to live life on your terms, on your terms, come alive. You got some stuff. You're God's miracle child. You have some value. That's why you're still here. You think it's some accident that you still got a, a pulse, that, you, that you're not taking a dirt nap? Today is the best day of your life. What do you mean, Mr. Brown? I'm in, I'm in debt to, up to my ears. What do you mean? I, I, I've got all types of illnesses, the compass and the bunkers. What do you mean by that? If you don't think it's the best day of your life, try missing one. I didn't bite my tongue. I said, this is the best day of your life. Use it. Take action to maximize it. Use it effectively. And when you think about yourself here, you have favor with God. There's some things we take for granted. Being here is not a given. You are here because you have a favor with God. Mm -hmm. You've been protected. You've been shielded. Nothing will prosper. None of your enemies, none of the adversities, none of the hard times in life, none of those things will conquer you because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You are more than a conqueror. Woo. 
That's some powerful word up in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're supposed to live right here, right now. Put voice in the comment section. If you can hear me in your heart, if you're ready to do something exciting with your life, if you want to make your life a daring adventure, as Helen Keller would say, born deaf and blind, and she still made her impact. If you are ready now to be coached, if you're coachable, if you're willing to learn, if, you, if you're not willing to learn, nobody can help you. But this is the time you got to learn some new stuff. Money is being generated in a new way. How do you know this? Because I make some of it every day. <laughs> and I enjoy it. I feel better when I have money. Yes, I do. I don't have to take my blood pressure medication as often. Yeah, I mean, I feel so much better when I don't owe peepers. <laughs> and I don't have to disguise my voice when they call me. May I speak to Les Brown, please? I'm sorry, but he's not here. <laughs> oh, boy. I had that down pat. <laughs> I know I'm not the only one. Yeah. They have call ID now. We can see who's calling us now. <laughs> Put voice in the comments section and create a new life for yourself. Get ready to write a new chapter for your life. Get ready to live a life that will outlive you. Get ready to the, rob the cemetery of your gifts and talents and abilities. Get ready to be in a fight mode. Life is a fight for territory. And once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. Stuff's going to happen to you. Things are coming after you right now. Tragedies, hard times, sickness, pain, all kinds of things are coming after you right now, including blessings, including opportunities. And you want to take advantage of the opportunity and the lifetime of the opportunity. Make a move for you. Make a move for your dream. Make a move for a better future. Don't sit there watching and wasting time looking at Netflix and all that other foolishness out there. A friend of mine said, oh, man, I got 500 channels on my TV. Who's got time to watch 500 channels? Herein my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. It is a herein my father glorified that ye watch Netflix and CBS and and CNN and NBS, NBC, what all? Blah, blah, blah. Excuse me? No. Watching garbage day in and day out. How do you things expect things to get better for you? People say, oh, garbage in, garbage out. That's a lie. Garbage in, garbage stays. It makes you unproductive. It makes you cynical. You, you get in a depressed state of mind. That's not real. Garbage in, garbage stays, and it shows up in your attitude and your behavior. It blurs your vision of what's possible for you. It's, it's a distraction. My son John Lesser is right. That people pay more attention to their distractions than their destiny. You have a destiny. There's something, there's a work, there's a greater work that you're supposed to do. These things you shall do and greater things shall you do. In fact, you are here to do the greater things. And if you don't know that, ask somebody. Watch people who are doing the greater work and get around them and learn from them. That's what time we're here. That's what. That's the purpose. Not here just to have a good time. Yeah, you can have a good time. I have a ball. I enjoy every day. When they come to see my ashes, they'll see me smiling from the ashes. Mm. <laughs> yeah, they creep at me. They hear me say, oh, 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 He's got issues. 
Somebody get him some help, Tyrone. That's my squirrel friend. Tyrone said, you bringing it. You bringing, you kicking some knowledge right now. <laughs> I see. Why you laugh so much? Because these walls are closing in on me. That's why. Because I can't go nowhere. This, this the virus we've been fighting already they, they, is still here, it, and and now they say there's a, a mutation, another one that spreads easier and kills faster. So you want to know why I'm talking to squirrels? Hmm. You are you? Do you really want to know that, huh? Why don't, you, why don't you come visit me? I'll see you through the window, and I, I'll put my water hose on you through my window. <laughs> My doorbell rang. Who is it? Ooh, I have a window I look through. Mm. <laughs> Guys, you got a box. Boy, they take off. <laughs> I come out. I do it like this as I get my box. And the UPS man be looking at me and say, mm, Lord, that would touch. <laughs> I crack up when I come back in the house. Oh, I have on my little Mickey Mouse underwear. <laughs> I thought by now somebody would call the police. Listen, there's a senior citizen. He's outside getting his boxes from UPS, and he got on some Mickey Mouse underwear. Can you can you help us out here a little bit? Indecent exposure or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You know laughter is good for you. One minute of anger. I studied psychoneuroimmunology. Cycle the mind, neuro, the immune system. Oh boy, the nervous system. I studied that. One minute of anger weakens your immune system for four to five hours. You ever notice when you get sick, people owe you money? They don't call much. <laughs> They're praying that you die. <laughs> so they won't have to pay. Say, well, he won't need that where he's going. <laughs> I remember when I got sick when I was in Miami, and um, Miss Range, she came to visit me. I said, Miss Range, she owned Range, she she owned Range Funeral Home. I said, you know what? I appreciate your kindness, but I really don't appreciate you coming to visit me because I feel like you trying to check out my measurements. <laughs> <laughs> no, funeral directors and people who own funeral homes should go see people who are sick. Absolutely not. That's inappropriate. That's not nice. <laughs> I thought she was checking me out. <laughs> What's going on with him today? <laughs> Sometimes you got to laugh. Yes, to keep from crying. I said, Lord, wake me up and tell me it's a dream. <laughs> They got a mutation now to spread easier. And we got to watch out for that one. And we got to watch out for this one. And we haven't got enough vaccines and enough arms. And I got both my arms up now. And I'm scared I put them back down because I'm scared if I get a vaccine shot, I might grow a new ear out of my neck. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Put voice in the comment section if you think I'm crazy. <laughs> I love it. Put voice in the comment section if you'd like to be trained by me, if you'd like to be coached by me. Do you know I get paid to do what you just saw? I get paid. I get I get paid good, real good, good. More than what you make a whole, working for a whole month or two or three months. I'm not bragging. I don't say that to impress you, but to impress upon you. Your story has value. Your voice has value. You've got to learn in the new economy how to earn money virtually. And this is how you do it, how to come through this computer and be able to, in the attention economy, how to attract attention, how to hold the attention through the experience that you're able to generate and how to direct it, how to influence it and generate moolah. I can do this in my sleep. I can teach you how to make 
non-performance money where you don't have to work for it. You don't have to leave home for it. You do it virtually. That's, that's the new world order around the world. People who learn, if you're not willing to learn, you're going to have skinny children and you're going to have a small waistline. Yes, you will. <laughs> Involuntarily. Yeah. But boy, if you're willing to learn, mm -hmm. the possibilities unlimited. The possibilities of what you can do. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you. If you know how to attract attention, hold the attention and direct the attention. Yeah, that's why it's a new economy because everybody don't know how to do it. See, when you just give information, that only impacts two areas of the brain. But when you know how to create an experience with a story, with your personality, with your passion, with your laughter, with quotes, and a variety of other things, that impacts five areas of the brain. That fights dementia, Alzheimer's, and it makes you profitable. Yes, because there are people who want to invest in you. I, I, I just talked to someone who said, you know what? I want to put an extra million dollars in your pocket this year. I said, let the Lord have his way. Look at God. Well, yep. mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, come on, brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. Yeah, I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up. No. Hmm. Put voice in the comment section. If you feel this is your time, put voice in the comment section. If you are ready to get unstuck, put voice in the comment section. If you want to be coached and trained by me to live your dreams, to bring out the greatness that's in you. If you knew how to do it, you would have done it already. You can't read the label when you're locked in the box. Let me see voice over here. Put voice. Next seven people have put voice in the comment section. I'm going to do something special for you. Tola, let me know the first seven that comes up. The first seven that put voice in. Got something extra for them because seven is my lucky number. I'm one of seven children adopted by Mrs. Mamie Brown. I, I was born February the 17th. Uh, Joshua marched around the walls of Jericho seven times. Naaman, Naaman, you remember Naaman, don't you? He dipped himself in the River Jordan seven times. God created the world in seven days. Seven is my lucky number. Mm, I'm looking for seven people that are hungry. I'm looking for the seven hungry ones. Tola, let me know that. Let me know when you see him. Put voice in the comment section now. Be one of those seven. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise it because there's so many people that watch this program to 21. Be, be one of those, that 21 that put voice in the comment section. I got something special for you. Yeah, because God has been so good to me and I want to be so generous to you. Yes, put voice in the comment section. February the 17th, I'll be 76. Wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I've been speaking for 52 years. And I still love to do it. And this is my legacy. You see my children there? You know, it's not easy to work with your children. I've fired them so many times, and they've fired me. <laughs> But that's, that, look here, those are my children, Calvin on your left and Samaya and Patrick and Serena and Ona and John Leslie. Well, those, those are half of them. I got five more. <laughs> Lord said, be fruitful and multiply. Thank you, sir. I took him seriously. <laughs> I smile at you, you'll fail a rabbit test. <laughs> you know, the millennials say, what's a rabbit test? Oh, don't worry. Oh, don't worry. You don't understand. You wouldn't get that one. 
<laughs> put voice in the comment section. I, I, and I also want to see some of these comments. What are y'all? What are y'all saying to me? I've always heard that about frog legs. Yes, Isaiah. Frog legs are delicious. They do taste like chicken. Marinated frog legs. Geesh. Yes, Sharon. Marinated. Good morning, Mr. Brown. Good morning, Robert Mark Anthony Parker. <laughs> And Jimmy Picos, yes, indeed. Yes, Nelson said, frog legs, oh, yes, frog legs are good. Don't knock frog legs. Hey, David Bryant, thanks for putting voice in the comment section. We'll hook you up. And Desiree, voice, thank you. Thank you for, for vo putting voice in the comment section. We're going to hook you up too, yes, indeed. Yeah, this this is a good time. This this is, this is I'm, I'm just, God has been so good to me, and I, I'm just somebody said LinkedIn user, you are you are absolutely hilarious. Well, thank you. I can bring a smile to your face. Sometimes you need some laughter. You know that? Sometimes you need some laughter, you need a smile to distract you from all this stuff. You know the air is different right now? The air is different. Maximize this. The drama has been minimized. It's just for a moment now. It's just for a moment. But you can breathe easier. You're not waking up saying anything happened today. No, it's just for a moment. Hard times have an expiration date. And so do good times. Let's take advantage of it. Let's get together and make something great happen. Let's get together. Let me help you get rich. Why? Because you feel better when you got some money. Do you hear me? Don't you let people tell you money is the root of all evil. People who said that didn't have any. <laughs> no, he didn't go there. Yes, he did. Hello. <laughs> How can he have so much energy at 75 and 76 on February the 17th? Because I love what I do. I love it. I love changing lives. I love making you laugh. I love making you feel good. I love inspiring you. I love challenging you to get out of your comfort zone. I love telling you, rob the cemetery of your talents because somebody inspired me. This is what I was born to do. This is what I do. No. So don't be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> One of these faces. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. All right, JJ. All right, Jonathan. Okay, okay, okay. Having a fat flashlight. If you want to excuse me. A hot flash. I call them power surges. <laughs> Hello, Ruth. Hi, Ruth from Canada. Hello, Ruth. Have a wonderful day today. You deserve it, darling. I want you to put voice in the comments section if you're ready to be trained by me. I will bring your voice up. If I knew how to bring you up now, I would, I would, I'll do it right now with the world watching. But my, my son is not here now to, to bring somebody up so that I can talk to them. Because I can show you what I can do. Mm -hmm. Some of you have seen me do it, too. I can do it. Can't nobody do it like I do it. No, you can't lose with the stuff I use, Reverend Ike used to say. <laughs> Put voice. This is your day. Put voice in the comment section. Put it there right now. Take some action today towards your life, towards your better life, toward the next chapter in your life. Put voice in the comment section to the step that you're taking toward creating your own personal economy. Put voice in the comment section so that you can start your own business with your voice, with your story, with your knowledge on how to present yourself, how to sell yourself, how to negotiate, how to become more impactful, how to tell your story. Put voice in the comment section. This is your day. Mm. I, I didn't want to wait till 12 noon. I want to get it out now. And, and let me share this with you. I said it earlier. The people that you interact with most, your inner circle, I like to call it. If you look around your inner circle, family members and friends, 
if they don't inspire you to create the next greatest version of yourself, that's, that's not a circle of power. That's a cage that's restricting your potential for discovering the next greatest version of yourself. Today, you have an opportunity. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve to make a choice so that the future you, listen to me closely, the future you will say, whoa, I'm so glad that you made that choice, that you decided to be coached by Mamie Brown's baby boy, Les Brown. He's a little touched in the head, but he knows his stuff. He's helped thousands of people live their dreams. Thousands of people live their legacy. Thousands of people live a life that will outlive them. Thousands of people to start their own business. Oh, I, I, I'm so glad you you made that choice. So you get to see me. I've been waiting on you. <laughs> this has been Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy. Put voice in the comment section and change your life. That's my story. Invest in yourself. You're worth it. That's my story. And I'm sticking to it. Bye for now. Keep in mind, February 17th is my birthday. I'll be 76. My twin brother Wes and I. I, I don't discourage gifts. When people give me a gift, I say, oh, you should have. Most people say, oh, you shouldn't have. No, 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 no. I say, oh, you should have. And I like Mickey Mouse. Anything Mickey Mouse, M-I-C. I'll see you real soon. K-E-Y. Why? Because I like you. M-O-U-S-E. <laughs> I'm going out now. For a walk in my neighborhood. Mm, mm, mm. You know me. If you see me walking down the street, you know me by my Mickey Mouse mask. Bye for now. I love you. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it, okay? Okay. Bye. Okay. All right. Tyrone? Yes, okay. All right. Bye. Bye now. I'll talk to you later, Mr. Brown. Okay. Oh, wow.